So currently we're on the profile section. This is just kind of general information that the colleges need to know to start your file. The common application got this information from you when you signed up for the account on the registration page. So you want to double check and make sure that everything is correct. Make sure you use capital letters where appropriate. And any question that has an asterisk is required. And so make sure you answer those particular questions. So for example, have you ever used any other names? I haven't answered this question yet, so I need to make sure to go ahead and answer it. Otherwise, I won't be able to check this off my to-do list as having been completed. I'm going to say, no, I did not use any other names when uh, in school. So um, this is all pretty straightforward. And whenever you come to the end of the section, you're going to click on Continue when you are done. It will save this information and bring you to the next section. So you'll see there's a check mark, green check mark, next to personal information, meaning that I completed all those required sections. Okay, so we're now on the address section, um, and this is the address that I gave on the registration page. And this looks correct, so I don't need to edit it, but if I did need to make corrections, I can go ahead and edit it. Or if I needed to change it all together, I could remove it and put in my new permanent address. And I do not have an alternate mailing address, and now I'm going to click on continue. Contact details. Uh, this is my contact information. And again, I am going to answer the questions with an asterisk next to it so that I can get those green check marks. The common application does request your phone number. And colleges will sometimes use this information to contact you if they are missing information or for admitted students, they might call you to congratulate you or see if you have any questions. So make sure it is a phone number that is regularly answered. And uh, if there is a voicemail attached to it, it is a professional voicemail, um, ideally saying your name and or your the phone number that, um, that uh, is attached to that particular number. Um, I am going to say that I don't have any other alternate phone number, and I'm going to click on Continue. We've now reached the Demographics section. As you notice, there are no asterisks here, but you can go ahead and answer these questions if you want to go ahead and provide this information to the colleges. It can be really helpful for the college admission officers to get a sense of who you are and to create this three-dimensional image of who you are uh, if you answer some of these questions, but certainly the ones that you are most comfortable um, providing information about. And you'll see that they do tell you, remind you again that this section is optional and you don't have to answer these questions. So I'm going to go ahead and just say I am done with the section and click on continue. We are now in the geography section, and so they are asking for uh, where you were born, how many years you've lived in the US, and how many years you've lived outside the US, if this is applicable. And this is a required section, so you can go ahead and answer these questions. I'm actually going to bypass it, and you'll see that when I bypass it, even though I am allowed to continue on, I do not have that green check mark, where I, whereas I did get the green check marks in the other sections because I did answer all of the required questions. We're now on the language section, so this is where you can tell the colleges uh, the languages that you are proficient in. Um, so if you're proficient in English, you should certainly mention that you are a proficient in English. If you're proficient in multiple languages, you can tell the colleges exactly how many languages you're proficient in. So I am going to say that I am. English was my first language. I speak it proficiently. I read, write, and it's spoken at home. And I will tell them that my other language is Spanish. And that since I've been learning it in school, I can speak, read, and write it fairly proficiently. And I will continue. We are now on the citizenship status, and so this is where you would indicate your citizenship. So if you were born in the US or you hold a US passport, you are a US citizen. If you have uh, US citizenship and another, uh, another country's citizenship, you might be a dual citizen. If you have a green card, you're a US permanent re resident. And if not, none of these apply, then you would click on other or non-US. Um, and you'll note this is a required field, and your citizenship status can certainly affect uh, financial aid um, at different schools.
And this final section in this, uh, or the final question in this section is the Common Application Fee Waiver. And so for some students, um, applying to colleges and paying for the college application fees uh, might be uh, financially difficult for their families. And so if this is the case for you, you can certainly mention this um, and you can say yes, that you think you do um, need a fee waiver. And you can see the different categories where you might be eligible for a fee waiver. So for example, if you've received a fee waiver from your college counselor or your guidance counselor at school um, in order to take the ACT or the SAT, then you might be eligible for a college application fee waiver. And so you would just check those items that apply to you. And the fee waiver signature at the bottom simply indicates that you are certifying what you have stated above is true and correct. And I am going to click on continue.